What'd you do? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, my name is Volta. I'm the artist behind Color Snack. Welcome to our show, uh, Watercolor Happy Hour, um, where we show you how to make a cocktail. So this is my husband Dan. He is the mixologist of of our home. <laughs> sure. Uh, and. I, so after he shows you how to make the cocktail, I will show you how to paint it with watercolors. Uh, today's cocktail is a really special one uh, because I love the raspberries that are in it and it's also pink, so it's like really fun. Um, but yeah, Dan, do you want to share a little bit more about the cocktail? Yeah, yeah. And as you guys know, we've been following us over the years, this is always a nice little date night activity, a middle of the week activity where you can make a cocktail together and then uh, paint the cocktail together. Now, this is a very simple one. Pretty much anybody can do it. And it's a variation off of just a traditional sour. So you could say this was a gin sour with some type of flavored syrup. Mm. Uh, this specifically the clover club dates back to the 1800s in philadelphia it was sort of the cocktail of the elite of the rising middle class middle upper class of uh, you know, attorneys and uh, bureaucrats and those types of folks in the quasi nation's capital that was philadelphia uh, the, the vestiges of the original nation's capital mm -hmm. i guess uh, and yeah, this this is a, a nice one where you have that sort of frothy egg white with acid and syrup, that base that you see in all the sours. Uh, this specifically adds in raspberry, and because it wants the raspberry flavor to shine through, that's it uses gin as the liquor, as opposed to like a whiskey sour where you want to accentuate the whiskey, or an amaretto mm -hmm. sour where you want to accentuate the amaretto, so you don't really use fruit juice other than lemon or lime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, uh, enough about my pontificating about mm -hmm. the mixology of these cocktails. Let's get down to business. Now, I totally forgot to make a raspberry syrup. You can make this ahead of time, uh, but what but I'm gonna do, don't. but yeah. if you don't, or if you're like me, or you're just like, oh, you know what? I'm really in the mood for Clover Club. You can eyeball, a handful of raspberries in your shaker and then take the simple syrup that you made very quickly <laughs> right before the show uh, in the microwave right in the microwave yeah. so in this case I just did like a, a two to one ratio of sugar to water got it to the point where it was hot enough to dissolve and then I threw ice cubes in to make it a one-to-one -one. Mm -hmm. and that's a way to really quickly chill it mm -hmm. so you can use it right away or make simple syrup and it won't melt the ice and make your stuff all a mess. Yeah, that's also why the, the chopstick was in there so that uh, I could stir up the ice to make sure that it did not melt. So I'm going to add a little bit more than one ounce. So usually you use an ounce of simple syrup in this. I'm going to add a little bit more because some of that's going to get stuck to the raspberry. So I'm doing an ounce and a half. But if you're using syrup, just do the regular raspberry syrup recipe of equal parts sugar water, cooking the raspberries in it, and you'll have, and then let it cook down, all that raspberry goodness will infuse into it, strain it out, boom, you've got your raspberry syrup. But we're doing it this way. So even if you're not, and in fact you could, I imagine, get away with just using raspberries and covering them with water and kind of smashing it. Mm -hmm or covering it with, excuse me, sugar. And you kind of do the same way that uh, that they make that macerated berry. Oh, in, yeah. uh, uh, what was the one that we did just uh, the other day? Uh, it was the, uh, the uh, caprian, cap caipirinha. caipirinha. Yeah. Yeah, in a similar way to that. So the strawberry yeah. caipirinha with cachaça, <laughs> if I got it right. Cachaça, yeah. Ca I got you, got it wrong. It, you got it. You almost got it. I got it wrong. You were 50% there. Cachaça. 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 
Why do I want to pronounce that with a hard C? I don't time. know. <laughs> Yeah, and just as a little bit of a of a riff, because I never like to do anything normally. They used uh, lemon juice in the original. I'm using grapefruit juice. Uh, again, this is that super juice that we like to make. Uh, it keeps practically indefinitely, uh, and it's a zero waste type of super juice. So one of these days we'll actually make it on the show. Yeah, I've talked about it enough. Yeah, I feel like we should probably do it. Yes. And now another one of my my things, one of my hills that I'll die on. <laughs> Carton egg whites yes, foam perfectly so <laughs> fine. They're pasteurized, far safer and cheaper. Again, I don't like wasting things, so I don't have to throw away an egg yolk mm -hmm. with this. I can just and use. And convenient. Yeah, and like, very convenient. Yeah. No mess. I don't have to worry about the, uh, the egg shell getting in the cocktail because mm -hmm. usually you have to do that first. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about that at all. And I'm doing uh, just one ounce of of the egg whites. Actually, I'm going to do an ounce and a half because that's roughly a full egg and I want that to be, I want it to be very frothy today. Yeah, frothy. And again, a lot of this stuff is going to get hung up in the raspberries because mm -hmm. I try, you're going to see me as I strain it through, it's going to make this kind of like slurry of raspberry junk. Uh, so yeah, we're, we're going to, we're going to lose some volume because <laughs> of my stupidity. Uh, <laughs> Hi everyone. Hi David, Georgetta, Yolanda. Welcome. Thank oh, you so wow. much for joining. Super juice. David says super juice <laughs> merch. Maybe we should make some. <laughs> I like the line of complex syrup. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like, who needs who needs it's simple? Simple when you can go complex. <laughs> uh, it's funny. That was like that was like my uh, my catchphrase uh, when I first uh, started becoming more in, uh, professionally more into data science and mm -hmm. doing a lot more speaking engagements. Oh, my tagline was no, no, not super oh, juice. No, make the complex, make the complex simple. simple. <laughs> <laughs> super juice. Like, data science. Super juice. <laughs> oh my gosh. I was trying to remember. It's like, did he ever use that in the context of like, <laughs> it's, like super juice. it's like, please client work with me. I will bring super juice. <laughs> I should try that for my next client again. Super juice. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm anyway. also going to add, I added a little extra egg white just in case. I don't want it to, in case there gets to be a little too much, I'm kind of doing this ad hoc. I'm going to add a little bit of, a, of a orange bitters because that offsets. Or actually, no. You know no. what's even better? Mm. I have. I forgot. I discovered it. What's even better? Uh, orange blossom water. Ah. But what if people don't have that? Then you can use orange bitters. Okay. Good. And if you don't have orange bitters? Orange zest. Orange zest will also do the trick. Okay. Rose water, where is it? Oh, shoot. I thought okay, I was let me so... find. Let me see if I can find it. I thought I had it, but it's okay. I can use orange bitters instead. I thought I had it in a little bottle. It's in an orange bottle. Isn't it, isn't it this one? Is that an O? Oh, A. A R. R. Yeah, that's, that's rose water, and that is uh, um, absinthe. Oh, oh that's you terrible. smelled the wrong one. You wanted the rose water one. That smells terrible. That's ah, okay. I'll use a few drops. Yeah, of this I don't one. know where it is. <laughs> Nobody wants to watch us dig through a cabinet, or they might. Hyper juice. <laughs> oh, Tiffany and Adam. Hi, Tiffany and Adam. Welcome. <laughs> oh, my dad said hyper juice, like hyper, hyper grass. Yes, oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Clever dad. <laughs> yeah, we'll have to ask Adam about the new spelling of turkey as well. Oh, yeah. Ah. But I do, I do believe that makes sense, because that's actually how you install it. Yeah. Um, Turkish, I think. I believe it does. All right. So all I'm doing now is because we have that, because we have all that egg white and acid, and syrup, and also if you have it, uh, I'd recommend using uh, guar syrup. Mm -hmm. Just adding a little guar, but just a little pinch. It's like like a quarter teaspoon per cup of syrup. If you're doing something like this, does it help? It helps. It helps emulsify. It helps. It helps hold together the structural integrity of that sort of bubble matrix of your mm -hmm. egg whites. Wait, where is this going? They probably said calculus forever. Calculus forever. <laughs> oh, us, us geeks, we get so interested in things. 
How are you? Complex simple. I was just juice. reminiscing about my cow how to class I took one summer and how much I hated it. <laughs> I'll have to ask your dad about you slamming doors about calculus. I was oh god. It's just oh. worst idea to take a calculus class over the summer in like a four week semester. Oh yeah, that's when that's when the people recommend. that have already taken <laughs> yeah, calculus I know. take calculus. Uh, I was I thought I was being smart. I'm like, oh, I'll work ahead. And I did save some money. Like I tested out of, like I didn't have to take that class at, um, you know, the university I was attending. Oh, this was in high school. Yeah, I was still in high school. It was terrible. Oh, though. It was poor like, father. I'm sorry, dad. <laughs> We're slamming the door. No, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sure that. Oh, wow, it looks so good. I'm sure that he was, he was just proud of you for trying so yeah. hard. Because I imagine that you did not give up and you still got through the class. Oh, yeah, I think I got a B or something. Maybe an A, I don't remember. I, I like blocked out that memory. So this was a college level calculus yes. class that you were taking in, in high a, school. In the summer. You know how many yeah, actual college students fail calculus? Yeah. Yeah, I don't I, I guess now thinking back on it, I don't feel so bad, but Yeah, I imagine he was he was he was impressed with your passion. Yeah. Yeah, we could call it that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that not the other side of brain? <laughs> Yes, David, I I do the other side because the art is the other. Yeah, you can't if you can't tell listening to us talk, we think on the opposite sides of our brain. And together we make a super juice super brain. Super brain, hyper brain. We combine. We're like wonder twins. Why'd you put him like this? Like oh, in yeah. the row. So I'm like making the decorations. Soldiers. Can you see that? Can you see this technique here? There we go. Yeah, little 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 soldiers in a line. <laughs> As we just take it and we put our hand on there and we just just run it right through and hopefully if I didn't miss completely, which I did on the back half, boom, boom, boom. Wow, these are such soft little raspberries. Yoink. There we go. Okay. Because I want them to be stable. We just set it on right there. Ooh. Bada bing, bada boom. So, oh, actually, I think in my painting they were like this. <laughs> well, now they have little frothy. But I actually kind of like this. It's fun. They're, they look <laughs> like little snow-covered razzies. <laughs> yes. So pretty. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, let's try, try this. Yeah. I added extra sugar in these. These were some uh, more more bitter than usual raspberries. So Ooh, hopefully it tastes good. okay. That's really good. That's so another reason I added extra syrup. So smooth. Even like mm. I will say, oh, okay. I will say these raspberries were kind of disappointing because when you just eat them on, on their own, they're not they're not good. It's like a batch that just was not good. But you could still use them, so like don't throw them away if you get a, a box of raspberries and and yeah. you can't eat them on their own. Put them into a simple syrup, right? Like repurpose them. Don't throw them away. Yeah, because in a cocktail like this, and and a lot of actually a lot of foods that contain raspberry, they don't really taste that much of raspberry they just smell of raspberry yeah. which is what you get here especially That's when you true. have these this row yeah, of like snow capped berries <laughs> yeah. yeah snow razzies yes <laughs> when you have this it just you're, you're getting you're shoving your nose into raspberries yeah it's nice you're gonna smell like hey it's pat i haven't seen him in a while hi pat thanks for joining yeah. we missed mm. you <laughs> yes it's not bad yeah it's really good all right well here we go. So that is the uh, a classic cocktail, a Clover Club. Uh, yeah, give it a try. It's one you can make yourself very easily. Uh, and once you get that down, then you can pretty much make any of the sours of the cocktails. So go nuts. All right. I'm and in now the we'll studio. send it over to Volta. I'm in the studio. In the studio. <laughs> in the studio. I'm going to be tech support again and fail miserably at it. And everyone Got can this. laugh at me. Okay, so the first thing I do is I shut off, I remove this one, remove this guy from stream, yeah. and then I add this one to stream. Mm -hmm. All right. Is it upside down? Is it like sideways? It is sideways, yes. Okay, and then I switch to this one and move this one over. Boom. Is, that is still sideways. Is this, 
It is it is like in weird. landscape yeah, or, okay. or portrait mode. Um, there we go. Okay. There we go. Okay. That is upright. All right. Everyone's all nauseous now. Sorry guys, is it that better? Uh, Pat's been working hard. Is it better? Yes. Okay. Pat says he's been working hard and kept missing him. Well, welcome back, sir. Welcome back, sir. You deserve a cocktail, Pat. For working so hard, get yourself a cocktail, Pat. <laughs> Yes, yes. Does that remind me, of, uh, uh, text me or remind me to text you? How, I don't know how you're going to do that without texting me. But uh, yeah, we'll have to catch up. Oh, all right. So uh, we're going to start painting the cocktail now. Um, this is a really you. fun glass. Oh, yeah, thank you. Let me see if I can put it in the frame. Try not to dip my brush in it. <laughs> Just put it on top. <laughs> Oh, there you go. I know you can't really, you just see the top, but it still works. It like, it's just adds to the vibe, you know? It's like sip and doodle, but sip and yeah, paint watercolors. Yeah, cocktail and color. Oh, there you go. It's like watercolor happy hour. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? What a name. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna start uh, with this main shape of the glass. So it's gonna start kind of parallel at the top and then it's gonna kind of go inwards. So these lines are gonna go towards each other a little bit. And then it's gonna have like a rounded curve here at the bottom to connect these lines. Uh, and then we're gonna have the stem. It's a pretty substantial stem on this glass. Substantial. Substantial. It's like a super stem. <laughs> Super juice, super stem. Super cocktail. And then for the base, it's gonna just be like a, a little oval shape. Not much to it. So just trying to always, whatever it is that you're sketching, try to break it down into simpler shapes because then um, it's gonna be a lot more approachable. And the more you sketch and draw the more you're like gonna have that sense of uh just observational kind of skill which i think is really fun is a fun way to like notice some things that usually you might miss um so yeah i like i think i mean i'm a little biased but i think it's it's a great hobby <laughs> yeah and that's that's one of the things that i always struggle with on more subjective activities like art uh because i'm 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 like, like I'm, I'm a quantitative guy mm. so i tend to look at like quantitative levels of success yeah right? so how you want numbers yeah you want like, data and science what is my what is my what is my level in a video game yeah what is my my career goal like what are these things like how do i like like objective definitions but yeah so it's always nice to say yeah. oh you can point out this thing oh i noticed that this curve was better this was more symmetrical yeah I say that's that's a nice teaching mechanism for weirdo mathy guys like myself. <laughs> but also you could you could see it that way too, but also maybe as a opportunity to just like not look at the numbers but enjoy the like the process of observing things. What if I told you that this was an opportunity to look at the numbers? How would that uh, make you feel? I wanna look at numbers. Exactly. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah. I only want to look. I only want to look at numbers that are in my bank account, <laughs> <laughs> or those invoices. <laughs> no. All right, all right, guys. Um, on that note. On that note. So. <laughs> so I'm curious. So, so this glass has like a, uh, an interesting design, and it's kind of like if you, it's as if I'm sketching like an upside down raindrop shape. And then on the side, there's just going to be kind of like half of that shape. So half, half raindrops or water droplets. Uh, and then and then at the top we have, uh, so these raspberries, like I, if you look at them, they may, they could take a long time because, you know, raspberries are made up of those little like seeds and partitions and that could really take forever to paint. So I like to simplify things. So right now I kind of, I'm going to pretend that these, well, these raspberries are kind of like triangular in shape. So I'm just going to roughly sketch out 
three little triangles, and then the, the cocktail stick that goes right through them. And then I'll just like add the details with watercolor. So I'm going to keep it fairly simple and painterly. David is, is, is amused by our conversation on the quantitative nature of art, um, and sketch parameters and numbers. Question. <laughs> mm -hmm. Can I uh, get a paper towel? I forgot one. No. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so for the color, uh, this, is, this is such a fun cocktail. But again, if you're not a fan of pink, because I understand that everyone is. I mean, I don't know why, how you couldn't. But if you don't like pink. I'm aware of people's limitations. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you could absolutely like switch up the color and make, make like your raspberries blue or purple. Um, like don't stick to what exactly, I, I want to encourage people to like, you know, whatever you see, like it doesn't have to be that exact same color. Maybe like it could be a different one. So anyway, I'm mixing in a little bit of uh, this upper pink and I'm going to just start painting like inside of these shapes. So the way that, I, that you can see here, I basically left some blank spots in between of these shapes just to give it that impression that uh, there's like those ridges on the glass. So I'm just like leaving a little bit of a blank space unpainted. Uh, and then I'm just going to add a little bit of paint right here at the top. kind of make it look like it's, you know, there's a, a drink in here. And since there is quite a bit of foam, you know, this top portion is going to be all just like the, the white of the paper. And then you could also grab a little bit more pink and kind of add, drop in and like increase the, like darken this value. So it's, you know, the light source is coming from the left. So the right hand side is going to be a little bit darker, so you can always just drop in a little bit extra color here. There we go. Yeah, Yolanda is complimenting your nicely shaped glass, and oh, I concur. Thank you, Yolanda. Thank you so much. Uh, and then let's see, uh, now that I'm looking at these two pinks, I'm realizing the pink that I painted before, it looks a little bit warmer. So that probably means that I mixed it in with a little bit of orange. So I just wanted to point that out. Like upper pink is a, a cooler pink. So it has more of like a bluish kind of colder tint to it. So, um, you know, if you're looking for like that exact color, like kind of try to see like, is this pink a warmer pink or a cooler one? And, and then like, if you want it to warm it up, you'll add a little bit of orange. If you want it to kind of cool it off, make it more go towards the purple side, you just add a little bit of blue. All right, but uh, let's see, for the raspberries, I'm gonna use magenta, which is um, kind of like a fuchsia. It's, it's a little bit different from the opera pink. It's not as like a neon, it doesn't have like that neon kind of look to it. Uh, but it'll, it'll work great, or uh, a magenta or any red like will work great for these raspberries. And now I'm just gonna do like little circle shapes. Like it's totally like just, we, we are just like giving the impression of these raspberries. They're so not actually, you know, going to be super meticulous about it. And the only thing I do wanna make sure is that like the, the right hand side of the raspberries appears a little bit darker in value. So then I'm just adding a little bit more pigment on that side. And then a little bit lighter on the left hand side. So basically like just do like this, you're, you'll be doing this like dabbing motion. You're just like, just gently kind of like, almost like stamping with your brush. And that's pretty much it for the raspberries. Like it's, I think it's a very simple, like you could of course like let it, let this dry and you could also outline every single like individual raspberry seed. Um, 
or whatever those things are called, partitions. But it's not necessary as long as like you just have kind of like a general shape, a couple of lighter areas and darker areas, you are good to go. Very nice impressions of impressionist raspberries. Yeah. Uh, Thank you. And, and yeah, David, the uh, yeah the, the color wheel mathematics. I don't I don't remember my uh, my visible light spectrum physics and wave physics from college, um, but yes, there is some mathematics in there. Although I, I I feel like it's a little post hoc. It's kind of like music theory where. Uh, culturally, we designed these as colors that matched with one another or music notes that kind of aligned with each other and then fit the math to solve for what we enjoyed. Uh, and I only theorize that. I don't know if that's actually true or not, but I, I, I do know that different cultures have different musical and color scales. So that leads me to believe that it's the mathematics fitting the culture rather than the culture fitting the mathematics. Wow. Oh, sorry. We're talking <laughs> about watercolor here, not philosophy. <laughs> I digress. This got deep real fast, guys. <laughs> I just like zoned out for a second. Yeah. Like I don't even know where I was. Yeah, you were in like a parallel dimension, alternate universe. <laughs> yeah. Where this was not a watercolor happy hour, but a data science happy yes. hour. The, the upside down, where yeah. everyone is bored except Dan. No. Um, anyway. Yeah. Moving on. Moving on. So I use a little bit of blue to paint the stem of the glass, uh, just to like mix it up. Here I used um, a Payne's gray, so it's like kind of barely visible, but I thought the blue would look really nice here. Um, so definitely just like remember to make sure that uh, if your light source is coming from this direction, then all of your shapes should have like a darker value. So basically like um, a darker, more concentrated, vibrant color or version of that color. So that's what I mean by value. Um, but otherwise, like, you know, just making sure that you have some light spots for your highlights, darker areas, and then, and then boom, you're done. Like before you know it. Even your cat right. could paint this. Wow. Yeah. You just want to see a cat watercolor. I do. I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well. <laughs> what? Oh, I just. It, it, apparently, me me rambling about philosophy and color wheels got everybody excited. Oh. <laughs> uh, uh, there's no, there's no, it's Roy G. Biv, not Roy G. P. Yes, violet instead of purple. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I guess purple is a combination of those colors, whereas mm. violet is a, is a true progression color. of the visible yeah. light spectrum. Oh, wow. This is cool. Oh, color globes. I don't even know what a color globe yeah, is. Yeah, I don't know either. Hey, that's go getting deep. Yvonne's talking about happy hour. David's talking about more drinks. <laughs> One of these days, maybe we should just do a watercolor happy hour where it's just Dan having <laughs> drinks and progressively philosophizing about whatever it is that people comment about. That could like, be entertaining. Dan, tell us about your opinion of this. Like, I, I, I have strong opinions on the most random things. He does. Don't get him started <laughs> on like food trucks or farmers markets. Anyway, okay. No, no, no. Listen, no, listen, no. I'm, I'm perfectly okay with a true farmer's Thank market you, where farmers go to a market and sell things to people. The okay. problem is in Dallas. Yes. Okay, yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> Some areas have a more commercialized farmer's market, and that's okay. Then we don't go there. We go. Okay. Yeah, we go to the real farmer's yeah. <laughs> market because some of them have like, like a, a clearly it's a it's a distributor right there across oh the street. Oh my god, what did I do? Yeah, <laughs> you could see it. You okay. could see the wholesale food right. produce market right there, and they just grab it and move over. That's not a farmer's market. That's a reseller that you're paying twice as much yes. for where you could buy it at Walmart. All right. It sells the same stuff. We, no. <laughs> okay, <Thanks>. sir. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Um, here's a drink. Uh, why don't you have some? <laughs> hey, Pat's explaining it. 
in your color wheel section cut through the equator. Oh, okay. That's Ooh, cool. So, okay, that makes sense. So it's like uh, it's like where uh, where matrix algebra is used to represent uh, more than two dimensions mathematically. A color globe is representing, mm -hmm. you know, what is actually happening yeah. in that space mm -hmm. of colors. Oops. Very cool. <laughs> Very cool. Yeah. Thank you, Pat. Um, all right, guys. Well, uh, thanks so much for joining <laughs> us. Uh, we will be taking a break next week, but we'll resume the week after. So uh, we will have another fun cocktail for you all. And as always, if you have any questions about watercolors right, or cocktails, or if you have any suggestions for a cocktail, mm -hmm. let us know. Um, thank you so much. We so appreciate you guys joining and tuning in. Uh, and I hope you have a great rest of your week. Uh, yes, thank you, friend. Thank you. Bye. Bye.